to infinity and not be on the box office though Ooh, that's a hot mug guy hey guys this is my review for lightyear very rare occurrence for me for watching a children's technically speaking animated movie in the opening weekend i rarely ever do that but i had a very very special exemption for this film because it is associated with the Toy Story films. These are movies I have been following ever since I watched the first film on VHS back in 1996, and I have loved these movies ever since. And so when I saw that they were going to make a movie based on the character of Lightyear in, in the sense of what the toy is based on, I was actually quite interested. And even when I saw that Chris Evans was going to voice him, I was like, okay, I'll admit it's a little bit unfortunate that Tim Allen isn't playing him, but this is supposed to be Buzz Lightyear's opening story, and it's also been 20 years, so we're trying to introduce a kind of more of a younger voice to this character. Tim Allen is what, in his 60s or 70s at this point? Sure, you could say the same thing for Woody being voiced by Tom Hanks and Tim Allen voicing Buzz in the Toy Story 4 movie, but I feel those work with those toys. I think that works there. This is just a little bit different. It didn't bother me too much. Also, another thing that seemed to bother people a lot was the whole same-sex kiss thing. It comes across in a fucking montage, guys. So for those of you who are getting butthurt about it, it doesn't matter. For those in Disney who are trying to push this as them trying to be, oh, hey, look, we're progressive now. Fuck off. We all still remember exactly what you did with Finn for all of the Chinese marketing. Don't try and say you're on some sort of high horse. And now let's actually talk about this movie. I will admit, I did not expect to have interstellar vibes. Don't let me leave, Murph. But that's what this movie gives off. It's actually a very kind of concrete, very minor story. I was expecting Buzz to be going across the galaxy and whatnot, but it actually takes place for the most part on this one planet. Buzz finds himself marooned on this planet with this colony spaceship and they spend years trying to figure out how to get off this planet because unfortunately the crystal drive that gives them warp speed or whatever broke and they don't have the means to create it normally because that would be done on a more associated planet so they have to spend all this time making experiments to try and figure it out all the while people and time is going by for buzz so quickly because of these experiments he's not really getting to enjoy what he has on this planet and he slowly starts to realize that a lot of stuff has gone past him without him noticing to the point where he is thrust into a situation where zerg has appeared and now he's trying to destroy the city that Buzz has been desperately trying to get all these people off this planet. And he gets stuck with this ragtag group of, rev of recruits to try and take down Zerg and to save the city and get everyone off this planet. I will say there are a few things that surprised me in a good way and there was a few that surprised me in a bad way. The first being the side characters. I actually quite enjoyed them, all of them. One of them is voiced by Taika Wahidi and the rest all do a really exceptional job. I think everyone does a really good job in the voice department for this film even with one character who we'll talk about in a minute. The other thing that I really enjoyed was we get as many references to the toy from all of the lines that he said in the, in the last three movies combined. All of the tag lines, all of the catchphrases that Buzz is known for are said in this movie and they aren't dropped terribly. They all fit pretty well. There are a few jokes here and there that aren't great. They're kind of like, eh, even for a kid's movie. I thought that the humor was pretty uh, good. The music by Michael Gonacino is good as always. The man can never screw up, I feel, when it comes to making scores, and he does a very, very good job with this score. And then comes the part that I'm actually kind of nipped about, and I can't explain so much of it without spoiling it, but I was really let down by Zerg. And it's because without truly, truly, truly spoiling it, they do change who he is in a sense. I find that a little bit strange because at the beginning of the movie they say in back in 1995, Andy bought a toy from of Buzz Lightyear from his favorite movie. This is that movie. And this movie contradicts what Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, all the other Zerg kind of related stuff has said. So it's a little bit weird and I didn't understand that idea behind that. I thought that was a little bit of an odd choice considering everyone in the audience who has watched the other ones would have been like, wait, what? Now while it certainly is a little bit different than what I was expecting and actually kind of a well-written surprise, it doesn't work in terms of who it's supposed to be related to. 
and I was really disappointed by that. The animation though is phenomenal. Pixar just keeps on upping their game every time and there's always new details to see between the texture of the dirt, the shadows, the lighting, the dynamic movement of the characters and just the general look. It always looks like it's getting a better polish every time, a better buff on every single product that Pixar makes and I'm always never going to complain about the look of these movies unless they made a really really weird one but otherwise lightyear has a very solid animation and color style and art style overall though is lightyear deserving of all the kind of criticism it's getting i don't get it it's a children's movie it's a okay fun time it's not anything exceptional it's not anything terrible it's a very solid movie if just light on plot very fun on action but not really on the memorable and heartwarming bits that Pixar is known for. There really isn't that much of that. There is nothing in this movie that hits you as hard as any of the previous Pixar movies has had, and that's maybe kind of what might we what are some people are complaining about is that lack of emotional hit that we're all so used to from pixar so that is a valid criticism but in the end i'm gonna give lightyear a four out of seven i think it's a fun time i enjoyed it i had a fun time even though there was this random ass kid that was running around the seats behind me that didn't bother me because i was enjoying the movie but those are my thoughts about it. Have you guys seen Lightyear? Tell me what you guys thought in the comments below. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you didn't, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.